because I can also jump in and kind of bounce around. All right, I'm going to click live. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, my name's Kelly, and I am going to be giving you guys an hour-long flow here live this morning. Unless you're tuning into it later, then I hope you guys had a good morning and are enjoying your class later in the afternoon or evening. Um, so this morning I have Marari with me. She's going to be my model. She's going to be practicing on her mat over here. Um, as you guys can tell, we are starting to kind of make some changes, um, expand into um, just more of a user-friendly way of providing you guys um, your classes. And a lot of times, like we saw on Saturday morning, Amy would be dictating where there would be a model doing the practice. Um, we kind of want to move more in that direction and give you guys um, the best viewing possible. Um, so I hope you guys are grabbing your mats, getting ready to move. We're going to be doing an hour-long flow here this morning. Um, and a couple announcements as well as we're on the kind of uh, – track there. We will be opening June uh, 29th, so we are looking forward to getting our studio back up and running. Um, I can assume that most businesses are in the same boat here with, now that we have this date of reopening, there's kind of like this umbrella of questions that kind of come off of that one kind of answer that we have. So we are so, so grateful that we do have that light at the end of the tunnel, but I um, assure you we are going over um, all of the necessary safety things that we're going to be providing for the studio, um, the necessary equipment, the lack of equipment so that there's less surfaces to be touched, um, and we're just excited to have you guys back. Um, yeah, so bear with us as we kind of iron out all of those little wrinkles throughout the plan, and um, we are so enthusiastic, so, um, so ready to... Uh, get you guys back onto this floor, onto this physical studio. Um, and that's part of the reason why we wanted to expand a little bit and have a model while someone dictates. And um, this is our first go at it, so it might be a little bumpy at first. Again, we might have a couple of those wrinkles, um, but we're so happy that we have your feedback to kind of provide us with the necessary direction of how we need to change things to make them even more approachable and um, easier for you guys to view, easier for you guys to be able to hear the audio. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations or desires or needs for your practice, please reach out to us. Let us know. We are here for you guys. We are dedicated to this community. We are dedicated to giving you guys the best yoga that we can possibly provide. So in addition to our Instagram and Facebook, again, we have our YouTube channel. Go check us out on YouTube at Mystic Fitness. And if you guys want um, to make a donation, if you're in the financial situation where you feel um, as though you can make that donation, um, you can go to Venmo, look up our Mystic Fitness username, and you will receive one of Mary Beth's um, wonderful masks here. Handmade, nice elastic band for your ears um, for comfort. And these are still going to be used um, at the grocery stores and all those public places. So please make sure you have them um, and they are reusable. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, Charlie and the Tillets. Um, we love seeing you guys chime in. We love seeing you guys pop on. So find a comfortable position on your mat if you want to sit down or if you prefer a laying down position, um, whatever feels best here. Marari's going to go ahead and lay down. That's my favorite place to meditate personally because I just really can feel the ground underneath me. Taking a nice deep breath in and letting it go. Again, inhale and exhale. Allowing yourself to come into a natural breath pattern. Feeling that space between the throat where the air travels from the lowermost belly all the way up to the chest. And this pathway of breath. Notice your body on the earth. 
connect to that holding, that support. The ground provides us with endless and unconditional support. So tap into that power, tap into that magic. Let everything that came before your mat just kind of melt into the background. There's no need for a future thought here or trying to make peace with the past. Right now your physical body is within this moment. It's time to allow your emotional and mental bodies to arrive as well. Continue that breath here for five more inhales and exhales. With your next breath in, slowly starting to incorporate some wiggles into the toes and fingers. Maybe reaching the arms up overhead or taking some movement through the wrists or ankles. Just kind of reawakening here. Whatever feels good. Move the body. And notice how when you invite that movement now, the mind kind of kicks back into its thought. Maybe a little excited for movement. And as much as possible, try to keep yourself within this moment, within this now. And if you're in a laying down position, maybe pulling the knees in towards the chest, giving yourself a little squeeze. If you're in a seated position, maybe just taking some movement side to side. And over the next couple breaths, we'll slowly start to pick ourselves back up into our seat, taking your time to arrive. And again, the cues throughout our practice are only suggestions, and it's totally up to you to decide if that cue is something that you resonate with. Eventually, bringing the hands over your heart. Just kind of allowing the boiling of the thoughts within the brain to kind of turn into a simmer. And I invite you throughout class to really connect to the dialogue that happens between breath and sensation. We'll begin our practice here with the sound of Om, starting with the cleansing breath to prepare. Big inhale. And exhale. And for Om, in. Have a wonderful practice, everyone. Inhale, arm circle, sweep up. And then with the exhale, just start to kind of rotate the wrist here a couple times. So I often like to start practice with some movement throughout the wrists, kind of allowing the fingers and hands to warm up naturally here. So our legs are weight-bearing, but our arms are, you know, we usually use them for our upper body movements, so they're not usually for weight-bearing. So we want to make sure that when we get onto our hands and knees, our wrists are warmed up. Go ahead and shake them out a little bit. Sometimes I even imagine here as I shake my hands, any anxiety that I'm dealing with just kind of flicking off of my fingers. And allowing the fingertips to soften onto the shoulders and just rolling the shoulders up and away from the ears a couple times. So we're creating some opening through the chest and upper back. If you'd like, the fingers might even start to come up off of the shoulders and maybe spread a little wider. Take that rotation in the opposite direction.
When you've had your fill, go ahead and turn this into your table pose. So we're stacking the joints. Marari's going to have her wrists below her shoulders, knees below her hips. With the inhale, dropping the chest, gazing forward. And with that exhale, we're going to curl the spine and round here. Really press the floor away. Again, inhale, arch and open up. Exhale, curl and round. And Marari is just doing a fabulous job at really showing you guys how to make those movements as dramatic as you want or as soft as you like. Getting that neck incorporated as well, beautiful. So as she drops her chest, she's really pressing the floor away. And then those inhales, creating this nice pathway of opening through the vertebra and the chest to pull that air in. Take a couple more here, keep that movement flowing. I hope you guys are on your mats, your table pose, getting some movements here. Starting your morning with some delicious stretches. And now that we are paying attention to the dialogue that's happening within sensation, your body is going to start to require some more organic movements. So maybe rocking those hips from side to side, taking some nice wagging of the tail, or finding some big sweeping circles over to one side and then to the other. Just taking some movements throughout those hips and letting this process kind of take you through this journey. So the circles might start a little bit slower or maybe a little small. And then maybe as you open up through the hips, those circles get bigger. Changing the direction whenever that's welcome. And if at any point you feel like uneven on one side, you just go back to the other side and go ahead and Find that even stretch throughout the left and right planes of our body. This is a beautiful opportunity to connect to the fluidity of breath. Eventually, this will sink you back into a child's pose, taking a couple breaths here, just kind of sinking into your mat. Arms can be in front of you or reaching behind you. Knees can be close together or far apart. We just want to enjoy the sensation of grounding and kind of coming back to the earth, showing gratitude for your mat. Take one more deep breath here. And then we will return back into our table pose. And allow yourself to find a flat back, so that location right between the arch and the curl where your spine feels nice and long, and we're going to keep that chin gently tucked just like Marari here. Let's start to figure out what our core feels like by tucking the toes under and then lifting those knees to just a hover. So we're just going to lift them up enough where we start to feel that core connection start to kind of zip in. And the reason we want to practice this is because we want the core to be engaged. We want the breath to be moving naturally. So take one more deep inhale here. With the exhale, drop the knees to the ground and bring the shoelace sides of the feet and give them a couple smacks onto the earth. Uh, maybe if you're in your house, you might be riling up your animals or waking up a son or daughter in the bedroom. Let's do that one more time, and this will take us into our downward facing dog this time. So tuck the toes under, lift those knees to just a hover, feel that core pulling in. It's almost like this corset or belt kind of sucking you in, but allowing that breath to move naturally. Last inhale here, and with the exhale, hips pull up and back, that first downward dog of the day. Let's go ahead and pedal the feet out, explore some movement in your dog here. And of course, if downward dog is not really available for you yet in your practice, you can always remain in that table pose and continue some movement here. So as you pedal the feet out, make sure the fingers are actively pressing into the earth. Shoulder blades are pulling down and away from the ears. We're just finding that nice movement through the back chain of the body. It's good that we kind of warmed up our hands and wrists because now we're using them to keep us lifted. 
Take a couple more breaths here, moving through the back chain of the body, those hamstrings. And then we'll start to take these into some back and forth presses. So with the inhale, we're dropping the knees to just a hover to a bent knee dog, hips pull up and back. And then with the exhale, we're gonna extend forward into our plank pose, beautifully done. So those inhales peeling up and back to that bent knee dog. So we're finding the hips pulling up and back. Beautiful. And then with the exhale, we're hinging forward to our plank pose. So it's almost like this leapfrog-like motion. So remember that game leapfrog we used to play? It's kind of that same idea of loading up the legs in that bent knee dog and then using that power to extend forward to our plank pose. Beautiful demonstration here. And we'll take one more. And then we will end up in our plank pose here. And in our plank pose, those heels are pressing for the back of the room. Shoulders and hips are in one line. Beautiful demonstration here. Inhale together. And with the exhale, let just the knees lower. So we're going to find that first version of our chaturanga flow. So knees lower. And then the chest follows with the elbows pointing back. So we're going to let that chest follow all the way to the ground, elbows point back, beautiful. As you land, we open up for that low cobra, so peeling the chest up off of the ground, shoulder blades come towards the body, beautiful, inhale, and with the exhale, release out of this pose, making your way back to your table pose, and then tucking those toes under, hips pull up and back, downward facing dog. Pedal it out a little bit more here. Notice how now the body is a little bit more warmed up. There's a little bit more blood flow moving through. And we like to warm the body up accurately so that we can really delve into some deep uh, poses and hold some strong warrior twos and balancing postures. Beautiful. We're going to take a full sun salutation A. So with the inhale, we're bending the knees, gazing forward. With the exhale, walking or maybe a little hop towards the front of your mat for your forward fold. Let's pause in our forward folds for a moment. I love a good forward fold, so I'm going to make sure the knees are a little bent here so that you can really release the lower back. Shaking the head, yes and no. Maybe grabbing onto opposite elbow and finding a rag doll as you sway from side to side. I'm going to join you here in this forward fold. This is a great location for some inward kind of introspective moment with yourself. Taking an opportunity to kind of shift your perspective by bringing your head below your hips. Great opportunity to let the neck relax completely by shaking yes and no. Opening and closing the jaw even here. And sometimes if you're ever feeling like stuck, like stale energy or stuck, maybe you're at work and you just need to kind of break things up a little bit, a forward fold is such a great way to just kind of shift your perspective and remove those rough edges around your day. Beautiful. Let's inhale to our halfway lift as the fingertips come towards the shins, really lengthen through your crown. And with the exhale, forward fold. This time as you inhale, circle sweep all the way up reach to the sky and with the exhale pull that energy towards your heart ground down here feel the feet pressing into the earth breathe in breathe out inhale arm circle sweep up and with the exhale hinging from the hips bend in the knees forward fold inhale for that halfway lift and exhale, fold, hands plant, stepping one foot at a time back to your plank pose. Now in your plank pose here, I'm going to give you guys the option to choose whatever version of chaturanga that you like best. So that first version we took with our knees on the ground. If you'd like to drop those knees, inhale together. And with the exhale, find your chaturanga. So slowly lower, halfway or all the way. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra.
And Mirari's doing a beautiful upward facing dog. She's engaging her glutes and thighs off of the ground. And then she's going to pull back into her downward facing dog when she's ready. It's like art watching um, these yogis move throughout their class. So go ahead and pedal the feet out. And I'm definitely uh, a yogi that likes to move in my class. So move as much as you want. If I'm not cueing some sort of movement, go ahead and take it. This is your practice. This is your opportunity to really come into your body and feel those sensations. It's a very intimate practice being with yourself and tuning into what the body is experiencing. Let's take another sun salutation. We'll speed it up a little bit this time. So with the inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale for your halfway lift. Exhale, fold. <sighs> Inhale, arm circle, sweep up. And exhale, hands to heart. Ground here. Inhale. And exhale. <sighs> Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, grow nice and long through the spine. And exhale, fold, hands plant, step back to your plank pose. Breathe in here. With the exhale, chaturanga, lower to your degree. Inhale, chest peels open, either in that upward dog or low cobra. And with the exhale, downward facing dog. Two breaths here, breathe in, breathe out. And Marari, at any time if you need some water, you just hop off your mat and grab some water. So because it is warming up outside, it's warming up in our studio a little bit too. <laughs> so before we were practicing with maybe long sleeves on, now we're getting into our tank tops, right? All right, with the next inhale, right leg reaches up towards the sky. And with the exhale, curl the knee in towards the chest. Inhale, reach it long once again. Exhale, knee to chest, step to your runner's lunge. In your runner's lunge, we're going to make sure those feet are hip distance apart. And bringing your hands onto blocks is a beautiful opportunity to kind of keep that chest lifted a little bit. Rari's going to keep her left fingertips on her block as she spins open to the right. So the right fingertips reach up for the sky and this runner's lunge twist. Beautiful. So we want to make sure that this twist is coming from the left rib cage rotating over towards the right. We want to make sure that those hips try to stay level. And to do that, we're going to really engage that right foot into the ground. Here's your last breath here. Inhale. With the exhale, coming back to center, right fingertips come back down, using your core stability to prop yourself up into your crescent lunge. So in your crescent lunge, you might notice that the feet are a little bit wide apart. You might need to bring them closer together, depending on what feels best for you. You want to make sure that you feel like you have a stable foundation. We're going to find uh, about a couple dips here. So with the inhale, we're going to rise up, lengthen through the legs, arms reach up. And then with the exhale, bringing yourself down to a hover. Inhale, arms reach up, extend. And with the exhale, imagine you're pulling this heavy weight down with you. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, dip. Five more here. Four. Three. Two. And keep the pace that works best for you. Here's the last one. Inhale, reach up. And with the exhale, we're going to dial the left heel down, open up to that warrior two position. So it takes a moment to kind of find your warrior two. Everybody has a different amount of space that they like to keep between the legs. Some people like to keep the legs a little bit closer together, and some people have a more expansive stance here. So Marari is making sure that right knee tracks with the right ankle. And the left edge, uh, the outer edge of the left foot is pressing for the back of the mat. This is a beautiful warrior two pose. This is a strong posture. Arms are open in a T. Inhale together. And exhale. 
flowing in and out of some reverse warriors with the inhale flip right palm reverse your warrior and with the exhale find your side angle so letting that right forearm come towards the inner thigh inhale to reverse and exhale to extend let's take about three more here inhale reach up and over exhale extend finding this warrior dance here fluidity in the upper body and stability in the lower body here's our last round here inhale reach up and over and exhale extend holding in this extended side angle for a couple breaths so you'll see Marari has her right forearm on top of the thigh. That's a beautiful expression of this pose. And if that's the case for you, you want to press that forearm against the thigh and thigh against forearm. Imagining there's a wall behind you and the hips and shoulders are evenly pressed to that wall. Last breath here. With the exhale, come all the way up and out by reversing your warrior. And then with the exhale, cartwheeling hands down to your runner's lunge. Stepping right foot back to meet left, plank pose. Hold for the inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Take your time, move as slowly as you need. We'll hit that up dog or low cobra. And exhale, brings us back to that downward facing dog. Two breaths here. Breathe it in and out. I want to let you guys know Mirari will be joining you guys this Sunday morning and she'll be teaching because I am going to take a little trip to my Cape House, having a little pre-summer celebration there, me and my partner Patrick, um, and she's going to be doing Baptiste, right? The Baptiste version of yoga, um, so it's a little bit different, but uh, very reminiscent, a lot of the same postures, different sequencing. All right, inhale, left leg reaches up and back. Exhale, curl the knee in towards the chest. Inhale, reach it back up, last big sweep. Exhale, knee to chest, and step to that runner's lunge. Take your time to set up this runner's lunge, and the name of the game here in most of our standing postures is feet hip distance apart. So that gives us the solid stability that we need to flow in and out of some more intense postures. This time, the right fingertips are gonna stay planted, left arm reaches up to the sky for a runner's lunge twist. Now notice Marari has a stance where the knee is stacked above ankles to protect her joints. That right rib cage this time is rotating over towards the left. So that's the visual I want you guys to kind of have in your mind and keeping those hips in one line. Last inhale here. With the exhale coming out of this posture regaining that stability as you prop yourself up to a crescent lunge. Beautiful. Set up this crescent lunge before you start moving anywhere. If you need to walk that back foot a little bit more forward, that's a beautiful way of making sure that you are stable and your foundation is solid. We'll find those dips here with the inhale reaching through the limbs and with the exhale taking that dip down. I'm going to take about eight more here in and out, in, and out. Keep it moving as slowly or as fast as you like here. Use that breath for each inhale, reaching up, and exhale, dipping down. I lost count, let's do three more here. Last two, the best ones yet. And one. Inhale, re-extend, and then with the exhale, we're going to dial the right heel down, open up to your warrior two here. So if Marari wants to turn around, she can, but either way, we got the perfect option. <laughs> Beautiful. So this time, the left toes are facing forward, and that back edge of the right foot is now pressing for the back of the mat. So a lot of times in this posture, in these warrior twos, we focus so much attention on that bent leg. But I want you to make sure that that back foot is also engaged. That really kind of bumps this uh, warrior two up from being a great pose to an awesome pose. 
arms open wide. Take a deep inhale to connect to this warrior energy. And let's dance in that warrior here by flipping left palm. Inhales are that reverse warrior. And exhales are that extended side angle. Again, inhale coming up and out. Exhale, extend. Take about three more here. Really finding that wave-like effect through the upper body. While lower body is like roots into the ground. Beautifully done. And I just love this, being able to have a real-life student in front of me. <laughs> the next time you come into that side angle, let's hold here. Pause for a moment. Again, did you forget about that back edge of the right foot? This is super important in your side angle because now we're bringing our weight toward the left foot. So you want to make sure that right leg is engaged here. If you like the left forearm on top of the thigh, press into that. Last breath here, fire up those abdominals. With the exhale, coming back to your reverse warrior, left arm reaches up and over. And exhale, cartwheeling hands down, back to your runner's lunge. Left foot steps back to meet right plank pose. We're gonna pause here and hold for five breaths in our plank. We're gonna sneak those uh, abs in here. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now, Marari, you can always drop down to the knees as well here. Do not feel obligated to stay in that plank pose. You're doing a lot of work here for us. Last two breaths here. And we're going to fall in love with our planks before coming back to the studio, right? We want to all be in our best shape before coming back. Beautiful. Eventually, we'll come into our chaturanga so you can slowly lower yourself halfway. Inhale for that upward facing dog. Linger in that dog as long as you'd like. And eventually you pull those hips up and back for that downward facing dog. Beautiful. Pedal out the feet. Notice how now that we're about midway through our class, what has been engaged, what has been activated here, what emotions are arising. Yoga is not only a physical practice, it's a very mental and emotional and spiritual practice as well. It doesn't always have to be all of those things at the same time. With the inhale, let's bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk or hop to the front of your mat, forward fold. Pause in your forward folds for a moment. I love taking that extra couple breaths and letting yourself kind of hang out here. It's almost like a little pit stop that you get to kind of hang out at for a couple moments before continuing your journey. If you are working with any grip, bring the fingertips back onto the shins. Inhale for that halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, arms reach all the way up. And with the exhale, hands to heart. So I'm going to pop onto this mat here while Marari stays sideways so you guys can get a dual visual here. We're going to come into a chair pose to start. So let's make sure those feet are hip distance apart. Inhale, arms reach up. And with the exhale, hands to heart, sink the hips back into a chair pose. So we're allowing those hips to sink back. Weight transfers to the heels, and we're using the strength through our legs to stay lifted. Notice if the back has an arch or round to it, and try to find that happy space in the middle. For a moment, bring the palms to the outsides of the thighs. Press against the hands, and, and hands press back into the legs, so that you're really activating the outer edges of the thighs. Beautiful. Bring the hands back to heart. We're going to find some marching motions here. So with the inhale, we're bringing the weight into right leg, pulling the left knee up towards the chest. Exhale, chair pose. <sighs> inhale, right knee to chest. Exhale, chair pose. Keep this moving. Inhale, left knee. Exhale, chair. <sighs> inhale, right knee. Exhale, chair. Five, four, three, two, 
and one. Holding in your chair pose, five, four, three, stick with the struggle, two, and one. Hinge from the hips, find that forward fold. Whew. That should feel really good to release that tension that was starting to build through the thighs and hamstrings. You can find a little cha-cha or bending and extending of the legs. Wonderful. Inhale to a halfway lift once again. And then with the exhale, fold. <sighs> Inhale, arm circle, sweep up, reach back up to the sky. And exhale, hands to heart. This time we're going to transfer the weight into the right foot. We're going to pull left knee in towards the chest once again, but interlace the fingers on top of the shin. You can rotate that left ankle a couple times or finding this standing wind relieving posture. Keeping the left hand on left shin, opening right arm out to the right, left leg pulls out to the left. So we're going to pulse in and out of this dancing Shiva pose. So this is your inhale, separating the knee and elbow. With the exhale, we're going to pull the knee and elbow towards one another. You got it. Inhale, opening it up. Exhale, elbow, knee towards one another. Five. Four. Feel those hip flexors working here. Three. Two, Woo, keep that balance, <laughs> and one. It's hard being the model. You feel obligated to keep your balance. <laughs> now from here, we're going to hold that dancing Shiva pose. If you are the dancer type and want to grab onto the foot, maybe you kick the leg up. And if you're practicing your kick, a great way to practice is bringing the, thigh, uh, the hand underneath the thigh and just kind of kicking out a couple times. Last breath here. With the exhale, come back to center. Drop that left foot next to right, and let's shake out that right leg. So those uh, dancing Shiva pulses where we're kind of coming out and in are a really great way to strengthen through the hip flexors without using a lot of, um, what's the word? Without ha using a lot of um, force, right? It's more of a gentle movement there. So let's find that on the other side. Plant both feet into the ground. Inhale, arms circle, sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart. Pull the right knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers on right shin and rotate through that right ankle a couple times. Fire up that left glute. And then we'll come into our dancing Shiva pose by opening left out to the left, right leg out to the right and then we'll pulse in and out of this so the inhale is where we are exhale is pulling the elbow and knee towards the chest inhale open it up exhale center three two and one opening back up to your dancing Shiva pose. And if you'd like those kicks, you might interlace the fingers on the, or excuse me, not interlace. You might grab onto the foot and just kick, or you might bring the hand underneath thigh and pulse a couple kicks. Last two breaths here. Beautiful, coming back to center, releasing out of this pose, shaking out those legs, shake out the wrists, Maybe you empty coat sleeve from side to side. Beautiful. And then our last standing posture of the morning will be our dancer pose. So we're going to set up with a little quad stretch first. So I want you to plant the right foot into the earth to start. Inhale, arm circle, sweep up. With the exhale, dropping left arm out to the left and bending left foot, grabbing onto ankle. And I want you guys to know for a classic dancer pose, we're going to go for an outside grip, or sorry, inside grip, where we're touching the inside of the ankle. 
And sometimes this isn't really great if you have any shoulder issues. If you want to grab the outside of the ankle, that's totally all right as well. Let's start with that quad stretch. So we're lengthening the left knee towards the ground, pressing the pelvis forward. And then when the body is ready, we're going to find our dancer pose by starting to kick the left foot into left hand as we extend the chest and right arm forward. Beautiful. So from here, Marari has a beautiful dancer pose. Wow, look at that. And it is perfectly set up. She's making sure that both legs are active. She's providing enough kick with that left foot, but also using the left hand to kind of coax that left foot back. So there's this contrast effect locking you into this posture. Last two breaths here. And if you fall out of it, it's all good. No one's watching, I promise. <laughs> Although everyone's watching you, so. <laughs> Shouldn't make you laugh in the dancer pose. All right, let's go ahead and slowly start to come out of this nice and controlled. Eventually, left foot comes alongside right, and the arms are by your sides. <sighs> Inhale, arm circle, sweep up. With the exhale, dropping right hand out to the right, left foot plants, bending right knee and grabbing onto ankle. Again, we talked about that outside or inside grip. And start by really lengthening the right knee to the ground and kind of pressing the pelvis forward to get that nice quad stretch. When the body is ready, you can hinge forward and kick back into that dancer. And you guys will probably notice that one side is much easier to do than the other. I can only explain that by meaning that we usually have one dominant side, one side that we favor. And a lot of times there's um, activities that are, you know, when we're driving, we're using our right leg, but maybe you're a lefty. So just honor wherever your body is at. So Marari is kicking that foot into hand, and hand is pulling back, this contrast locking her in. Last breath, I promise. With the exhale, slowly come out of this posture. That is a personal favorite of mine. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen on the Facebook page. Uh, I did climbed Mount Monadnock, so I was doing dancer poses up there as well. All right, let's flow to the ground. Come to the top of your mat. Inhale, arms reach up. And with the exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Inhale to your halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Making your way into your plank pose, either stepping the hands or feet back. And then in your plank pose, we're going to breathe in here. And with the exhale, lower all the way to the ground. So finally, just let that chest land. Beautiful. Marari's going for a little extra push here, nice and slow. Arms come alongside of you, one ear to the mat. And just windshield wiper feet from side to side a couple times there. I love this exercise, very low impact way of stretching through the lower back and unwinding all of that connective tissue. I will say I'm doing my best not to go over and give you my uh, hands-on assists and massage. <laughs> Eventually lengthening those legs down the mat. We'll find a couple back strengtheners this morning. So we're going to come into a uh, locust pose to start. So flipping the palms down to the ground, the arms stay alongside of you. The beginning of this posture is simply peeling the chest and arms off of the ground. Try to keep that chin a little tucked as a natural extension of the spine. Now, if it's okay for your lower back this morning, maybe those legs lift up off of the ground as well. So you're fully just flying through the sky like Superman or woman or super whoever you are. Breathing in, really pulling those shoulder blades together. Here's your last breath. And with the exhale, release out of this pose. Take any counter movements that feel good. Personally, I like to bend the knees and windshield wiper side to side. Beautiful. And then I want to take a, a little bit of a different posture. I've never cued through this, so we're going to do this together. 
Uh, I'd like Marari to bring her palms underneath her thighs with them touching the ground. So we're kind of coming into this posture. I'll come close so you guys can see. So underneath Marari, we would see this. Her palms are down, kind of next to her thighs. And she's kind of on top of her knuckles. Now from here, we're going to take some leg lifts with individual legs. So the left leg is going to start to pick up off the ground, only to its degree. And we're going to find 10 toe taps here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hold it lifted up for 5, 4, 3, two, one, release, and we'll take it to the other side. So this time the left toes pick up and tap for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Keep that leg lifted, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, release out of it, remove your hands from underneath you. And that should also feel really good to get some blood flow through the palms that were kind of underneath you. Can open and close the hands a couple times. Pressing your way back up into your table pose. When you're ready, take a couple organic movements here that kind of reestablish some opening throughout the vertebra of the spine. A child's pose is a beautiful counter pose from those back bendy kind of motions. And then eventually we're going to take our favorite version of pigeon. So for you, that might mean that you want to lay reclined on the ground and find a figure four. Um, but I'm going to cue Mirari through a classic um, prone pigeon. So we're returning to that downward facing dog for a moment. Inhale, right leg reaches up to the sky. And with the exhale, we're pulling the right knee towards right wrist. And we're kind of landing it there. So what's important about this pose, I'm actually going to join you because I love this pose. What's important about this pose is that the right thigh is parallel to the long edge of the mat. So wherever the shin or ankle land is kind of um, secondary to making sure that that thigh is parallel to the long edge of your mat. Now a couple modifications that you can take here is taking a block underneath right glute and kind of sitting upon that. Or one of my personal favorites lately is opening up the left knee out to the left so that you're in more of like this seated kind of funky position with the legs. Now wherever you are, you can kind of take a couple breaths with your chest lifted. Sometimes people stay here for the entire um, time of this pose. Or you can hinge forward and get that really deep stretch through the right hip flexor. This is one of those postures where you really want to soften into it. So if you're noticing that you're tensing in that right hip flexor, just really send each exhale to that location. And this is one of those poses where sometimes we hold a lot of emotional stress through the hips or shoulders. This is one of those postures that you might be experiencing a little vibrating or um, sensations through your emotional body. I want you guys to know that all of that is welcome here. I heard this yesterday. I've heard it before, but for some reason it really resonated with me yesterday. This idea of emotion needs to stay in motion. So the more we kind of tuck away our emotions and kind of stop them from moving through us, the more we build up this resistance to exploring why we're feeling that way. So this idea of motion, emotions, moving through you, letting them pass through you. Take one more full round of breath here. And then when you're ready, slowly transitioning out of this pose in a nice, soft, and controlled way, slowly starting to prop yourself up, tucking left toes under, reaching back to that downward-facing dog, taking any little micro-movements here that you need, any wiggles. 
And then eventually we'll take it to the left side. So left leg reaches up towards the sky and then the knee pulls in towards left wrist, kind of sitting yourself down there. So again, make sure that that thigh is parallel to the long edge of the mat. Any modification that you took on the other side, you can try on this side, a block underneath left glute or opening right knee out towards the right. So wherever you are, choose whatever pattern of movement gets you the most benefits. That might mean keeping that chest lifted for a moment and then hinging forward. Letting yourself become soft once you've found the location where you can really relax into it. And if you're at home and you're noticing that the shoulders and neck are having a hard time relaxing, you might take a block or pillow underneath the forehead as a little support there. Find that breath, that exhale that soothes the soul, soothes the tense parts of the body. And poses such like this sometimes require you to kind of befriend gravity and let yourself be heavy. It actually enhances this pose the heavier you can allow yourself to become. Trying to just eliminate all of that resistance, even resistance within the emotional and spiritual body. Take two more breaths here. And ever so slowly starting to pick yourself back up. And we'll all meet on our backs. So take your time to get there if you'd like to find a downward facing dog to round it out. And eventually finding your way onto your backs, dropping the knees to the ground, flipping yourself over. And when you've made it onto your back, you can take a nice full body stretch, reaching the arms up overhead. Maybe even rolling the ankles and feet here. Eventually pulling the knees in towards the chest, giving yourself a squeeze. Perhaps you enjoy a little rocking sensation side to side. You want to make sure that lower back is still pressed onto the earth here as much as possible. So in keeping the right knee pulled in towards the chest, you can lengthen left leg down your mat for a wind relieving posture. And if it's more comfortable for the lower back, you might consider placing the sole of the left foot to the earth. Now in this wind relieving posture, just really kind of feel a slight pinching sensation through the right hip. And when we say pinching sensation, it's kind of like this constricting motion almost, but there's never any bad pain. So when I say pinching, it's more of just a kind of using the muscles and hip flexor to kind of press into one another. So never any bad pain in yoga. We do look for a nice deep stretch, but nothing that's going to cause any sort of injury. Eventually this will take you into your reclining twist by letting that right leg cross over towards the left. And again, a couple modifications that exist here might be taking a block and placing it underneath right knee so that it's not just floating in mid space might also mean that you do something different with that left leg that's extended. You might choose to bend that left knee. Yeah. This reclining twist should feel really lovely throughout the lower back, kind of recalibrating all of the benefits and positives that we've done through our movement. We'll be here for about three more breaths. When you're ready, 
slowly coming back through the same way you did. So give that right knee another squeeze. And then pull left knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers on top of left shin and lengthen right leg down your mat. Or again, you can take the sole of the right foot to the earth if you have any lower back stuff going on. In this wind relieving posture, once again, that sensation of kind of a, I'm looking for a better word than kind of contracting, but it's almost like you're using the weight of the leg to kind of stretch through that hip flexor. I'll find a, I'll find a better word for it. <laughs> Relax the shoulders. Eventually let this turn into your twist by taking that left leg up and over towards the right. And again, taking any version that you prefer, you can bend in that straight long leg. Place a block underneath left knee. Just indulging here. You can see Mirari is looking in the opposite direction of her knee. That's a great way to stretch through the neck. I'm so excited to tune in on Sunday morning from the beach and take your class. Hopefully it'll be a nice weekend down there. I'll be curious to see what the Cape looks like. Usually this is the opening weekend for summer, so be curious to see who's down, what's going on, what's open. Just looking forward to a nice bike ride down to the beach. Take your last breath here. Hope you guys are getting into something fun this weekend as well. Hope you guys have Monday off from work or virtual work, maybe. Coming back to center and taking any last posture of your choice. So maybe that's uh, pulling the knees back in towards the chest, giving yourself a squeeze, a waterfall or happy baby. I love a good happy baby to finish things off. Maybe rocking a little side to side. And then with the last few breaths here, if you have a posture that you're dying to get yourself into, eventually we will come into our final resting pose. Our Shavasana, our corpse pose. And that can look like a lot of different things. It can mean like lengthening the legs down the mat can mean finding a reclining bound angle, letting the soles of the feet come together, knees flop out, or letting the soles of the feet be to the outer edges of the mat and letting the knees flop in, especially if you have any lower back stuff going on. Just let a wave of breath come over you. Allow yourself to feel this sense of accomplishment. Indulging in the powerful nature of this practice. And the other day, I was talking to a friend of mine about coincidences. Some people just see coincidences as a coincidence, just something that happened. But I think we can all say truthfully that sometimes coincidence is just so uncanny the way that it happens and whether or not you believe in it or not I think we can all agree that there is this sense that sometimes the universe has our backs not all the time And there's almost 
the sense of comfort and not being in control of everything all of the time. I think it's no coincidence that this mysterious universe allowed our paths to cross. And I am so thankful that this universe led our paths to this very pinpoint, this moment. And whatever it is at play, whatever you believe in, it is magic whatever it is. Shanti. Your next inhale, slowly start to reawaken, allowing your awareness to slowly trickle back into your physical body. Again, notice the slight bit of excitement kind of chiming in through the thoughts. It's over. You did it much as possible, try to stay within this present moment. Take the next three or so breaths to slowly start to pick yourself back up into your seat. And once you've arrived, take your time to just sink into your sacrum, bring the hands over your heart either stacked upon one another or in a prayer position. Again, I want to take this moment to show gratitude for this mysterious universe for allowing our paths to cross here in this pinpoint of a moment. We'll seal our practice in with the sound of Om. 
starting with a cleansing breath, inhale, and exhale, and for Om, in, Thank you all so much for being a, being a part of each other's journey as well as mine. And the light within my heart bows to the light within yours. Namaste. Thank you guys all for tuning in to another class. Uh, I did go a little over time, so sorry about that. Um, thank you for joining Marari in her practice this morning. Um, she is joining our crew of teachers so we're excited. She's going to be debuting on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, and I'm thankful that she was able to help me out in going to my Kate's house for a little break. Um, so yeah, tune in. It's going to be a great class. Uh, thank you guys so much, and we're looking forward. We are counting down the hours until June 29th, so we will see you guys then. And until then, uh, please keep tuning in to our live feeds. We really look forward to these classes in the morning. All right, namaste, peace.